Hi everyone. In this series of video tutorials, we will cover the use of the software in MeshMixer. In addition to the videos, I've also created a written manual. And the first thing you'll find when you open it up is that in the table of contents, I provided links that will take you to the relevant content down below in the document. And uh, there are some introductory points we should make about using the software. First of all, it's a free program and you can download it and use it on your own machine. It will run on both Mac and PC, and you can get the program at www.meshmixer.com. And the um, manual that I've provided here is fairly bare bones. So if you want a more comprehensive manual, you can find it at this link. And in addition to the videos I'm providing, you might want to check out these videos that were put out by Autodesk, the company that made MeshMixer. And, um, uh, they can just help to bring you up to speed more quickly. Now, MeshMixer can import two types of files, OBJs and STLs. And both of those file formats have uh, what's called mesh data. So in CAD, uh, a mesh is any type of uh, virtual 3D form that is made up of polygons like this. Not all CAD files are uh, set up this way with polygons. So again, we're working with OBJs and STLs. There used to be a problem with quad faces uh, in, in which we couldn't get those into MeshMixer properly. I'm not sure if that has been fixed, but if you have an issue loading in uh, an OBJ or an STL, that could possibly uh, contribute to some errors. Uh, now, some things that we can do with MeshMixer are, uh, first of all, we can combine different 3D forms. So you can see here a uh, bull's head has been stuck onto a, a person's face. Over on the right, we see different appendages have been stuck onto this bunny, kind of grafted onto its back. Uh, we can also, in MeshMixer, sculpt forms from scratch. Uh, and and uh, the way that that works is MeshMixer actually gives us the ability to, to use brushes and apply those brushes to the, uh, the polygons to move them around almost as if they're made of clay. And we can also change the size of a form really precisely. So if, for example, we have a, a 3D model and we want it to be 100 millimeters tall, there's a way of making that transformation in the program. In addition, we can eliminate holes and join up parts that are disconnected using MeshMixer. And that's really important when we're preparing a file for 3D printing uh, because we need the file to be watertight. We need it to be a complete uh, unified single solid. Uh, by the way, um, as we're going through this intro introductory stuff here, uh, note that I've got links uh, that will take you to additional um, information about these things. Uh, we can also in MeshMixer make patterns in a form. So if we start with something like a bunny, we can get it to have a series of spherical holes uh, throughout the interior or create a Voronoi pattern on the surface or create other pretty interesting patterns. We can also use MeshMixer to set a minimum thickness for a model. So if, for example, we plan to print out this horse, uh, but we know that the leg is going to be too thin here and, and maybe susceptible to breaking either during the printing process or, or after it's printed, we can use the make solid command in conjunction with uh, setting the minimum thickness to, um, to bring up uh, the thickness of that um, previously too thin area. You can see the difference if you look back and forth between those two. And we can also make forms hollow on the interior. And uh, normally when you print something out, uh, there's an infill created on the interior, but there could be reasons why you might just want the, um, the center of the form to be just completely void. So there are some ways of, of uh, accomplishing this also with the program. There's, again, there's a link here that will take you to, to some additional information about how to do that. And finally, we can analyze and repair 3D forms in preparation for 3D printing using MeshMixer. And um, this is important because if we send out uh, a file from MeshMixer to our 3D printer and it has errors, that could be enough to, um, to confuse the printer and, and cause erratic behavior or other problems. So this is something we'll want to attend to 
uh, as we finish up our, our 3D models. Okay.